Hey everyone, we're back for another Tuesday Techie Talk because I love alliteration. <laughs> I'm so excited to have our guest uh, this week. Um, as those of you who tune in every week, as I'm sure you all should, and you know you should, uh, Taiki Talk, I, I talk about different topics about careers, life, what's going on, and I have amazing guests like the one we have today. Um, I have your, I'm just going to pull up, of course, like when I'm looking for something, I can never find it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited to have our guest, Molly Kreese. And um, so I, I'm just going to read your bio, if that's okay. And so Molly is a career and business coach and a networking strategist who helps young professionals and women recognize, realize, and articulate their value in such a way that they secure their seat at the table or build their own table. She offers one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching workshops, and has developed a woman network group called the We Network Tribe uh, that is dedicated to supporting and empowering women. So I'm super excited about that. So for those of you who um, are new to Taiki Talks, we occasionally, not occasionally, we regularly have guests. And so this week we're gonna be talking about networking with the brilliant Mo Molly Kreese. Welcome, Molly. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. Um, so before we, more, blah, before we get into the actual networking, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, like how you got to where you are? Tell us a little bit about the WE Network. Uh, so I was like every other grad out there. Um, I'm officially from the Caribbean, so I migrated from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I went to um, Monroe College, New Rochelle, and then I did my master's at LIU. And coming out of college with my MBA and degrees and all of that stuff, um, my focus was on just getting the job because you have student loans to pay and all that kind of stuff. And so I knew nothing about networking. I knew nothing about building relationships, about um, getting recommendations and all of that stuff. And I quickly realized that during my job search and my job process that something was missing because I was not getting the jobs I wanted and also I was not getting um, the recognition I wanted. Then I started um, looking at um, building a brand and networking and attending conferences and then joining the New York Metro chapter of the National Black MBA. I was fully engrossed now into talking to people and connected. And so that is in a sense how We Network Services was born, being around those experiences and realizing that I was not the only one that didn't know how to approach people or sell themselves. And so I saw a need in that and that's when We Network Services was developed. We started with um, curating specialized networking events um, for people that knew nothing about networking. We would have workshops, we would, um, people that are introverts, we would have speed networking, different specialized events that target to people where it wasn't awkward and it wasn't a pressure. And so that really took off and then the pandemic happened and then shift into um, the teaching aspect of it where we shift into coaching and one-on-one -on -one and, and workshops and speaking engagements and stuff like that. So We Network Services is all about support. It's all about helping. It's all about growing and it's all about creating an impact. Yeah, I, I was a first generation college student and I was one of those people like, I, I didn't even know about like building relationships with my my professors. I'm like, well, I don't have any questions, so I'm not going to um, office hours and that kind of thing. It wasn't until much later that I figured out that networking is the key <laughs> because people really aren't. I mean, I shouldn't say people. A lot of people aren't taught how to network and how essential it is to their career. Um, do you? What? So what are some of your top tips for? people networking in general yeah. and specifically for introverts like myself. Yeah, yeah. And if you look at, um, I just want to say, if you look at a lot of millionaires, billionaires, and you ask them what's their secret, how did they do it? 
they would tell you they didn't, first off, they didn't do it by themselves. And secondly, they build relationships. And thirdly, they were willing to be teachable, right? And so that those things are very, very important. And I, I would say one when you're thinking about networking, even as an introvert, I would say start from practicing with your family and with your friends, um, which is which is very important because you want to be able to articulate yourself in such a way that people relate to you, want to talk to you, and you also want to be able to clearly um, state who you are and, and what you bring to the table. So I would say practice. A lot of people don't talk about practice, but you have to practice networking. If you're new to it, if you haven't done it before, practice. Um, networking <laughs> is not you going to an event, uh, I usually go to these events and the event, it should be a networking event, but they have a DJ, the drinks are flowing and all of a sudden you forget the reason why you were there. So you're not networking anymore. You're, you're drinking, you're dancing, you're having fun. You might say hi once or twice to somebody, but it's not really, um, valuable or sustainable because one, you might forget to, um, have their contact. And even though you get their contact, you connect on LinkedIn or whatever. Two, at the end of the day, you might forget that person. You forgot what you talk about. Or, you know, you went, you had two drinks. The DJ was fresh and nice and you had a good time. <laughs> I'm going to the wrong networking events. <laughs> I need to like find out where these networking events are. Because I haven't had any booze. There was no DJs. I've never been to a networking event that had DJ. I am missing out. <laughs> so I would say if you want to, if you want to go go into networking, I would say be strategic, purposeful, and intentional. Because you want some sort of a result when you're networking. And so if you're just the person that just loves to network for the fun of it, go right ahead. I'm not knocking you. But if you're someone who wants to network and is trying to build a tribe and is trying to have people around you that you can build that relationship, then you must have a strategy. You must be intentional about the events you go to and who's going to be there doing your research. And you must be purposeful in realizing that when you connect with that person, you need to follow up, you need to follow through, and you need to maintain that connection. Okay, well, let's pull those apart. So when you said you have to be strategic, what did you mean by that? In the sense of you're not just going to an event just to go to an event. So if, for instance, I might be in an organization or I might have a friend that tells me about an event or I might go online and see different events happening. It is your duty to find out what kind of an event it is. If it's a networking event, you find out who is going to be there? Most likely it might be a workshop or whatever. You would know the speaker who's going to be there. If there's going to be a panel there, you know who's going to be there. Secondly, if you are somebody that is new to networking and you're just um, trying to emerge yourself into doing the networking, go with the intention knowing that it's a practice run and you, and you don't have to get get it right the first time all the time and also know that you are going to be intentional in that you're not going to just stand up in the corner and not say anything you're not going to be the observer you're not going to be the person who is shy and waiting for somebody to come to you but you're going to be intentional and strategic in that you're going to go talk to people I always say if you don't know what to say Join a group and listen first. When you listen, you gather information. That information is going to be helpful for you to share your input in that group um, when you're networking. Um, so all of those things you have to you have to be know how to do and be strategic about in that way. So okay, so I go to the non DJ party networking event very sadly because there's no DJ or drinks. <laughs> So I go, I know who's there. I know that's networking event. I get there. Then what? What do I do then once I get into and I, like I have all this knowledge about who's going to be there, what kind of people, like who's the audience, who's going to be on the panel, the speaker? What do I do once I get there? 
who do you want to meet? Who do you want to approach? Uh, so first off, I would say uh, meet meet the connections that you want to meet. And if you are a shy person and you don't want to just jump in and meet the panelists right away, start networking with some people around you. And like I said, try to go into a group first versus you go into the one-on-one -on -one. because the group is gonna be like an initiation. You're gonna get the hang of it. Um, you're gonna find some people that are really gonna welcome you and wanna know genuinely who you are and what you do. And then once you get, once you get yourself talking and you get yourself building that confidence, then it's time for you to go and approach those people you really came to the event to approach and to connect with. Yeah. So you said earlier you were talking about um, building your brand. <clears throat> Do you, would you say that's a, essential or important to networking? I would say yes, it's very, very much essential because who are you? And who do you want people to see you as? Uh, what's your message? What's your story? All of those things people want to know are um, in networking. You have to be authentic or else people are not going to gravitate to you. You're going to come across as fake and no one wants to build a relationship with someone that comes off as fake. And so it's up to you to show people who you are and how do you do that by your brand, by your message, by who you show up as. And so you have to show up as who you are. If I um and building a brand is not just about your presence. It's not just about your confidence. But what does your online message say about you as well? If you go to my LinkedIn, you see I have articles on networking. I talk about networking. I talk about job search. I talk about all this stuff. So if you are an intentional networker and you're someone that came to the event to meet me, when you come to meet me, you already know who I am because you've already done your research. You've already checked out my LinkedIn. If I have a website, you've already checked that out and you've already seen what I'm into and what I'm about. So would you suggest that um, people, like once they do that research, particularly on LinkedIn, um, that they can start to kind of pave the way, but maybe sending you a message beforehand or commenting on um, your uh, posts? Yeah, I would say LinkedIn is a very good platform to network virtually. Um, mm -hmm. There has to be a strategy though, and you have to know how to do it. Um, I can't tell you how many people have messaged me on LinkedIn and I have written them back and I'm like, this is not the way to approach me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you're trying to message somebody, I, I say a good opener, a good way is to show me that you actually know what I'm about. Show me that you actually took some time to browse my LinkedIn profile. Because mm -hmm. if you're sending me a message and you're talking about uh, technology or something of that sort, then I'm like, was this message really for me or did this person just make a mistake? <laughs> right? Yeah. So you have to know who you're talking to and you cannot just send a generic message. I will mm -hmm. know if the message is generic versus if you took your time to write one or two sentences because you really wanted to connect with me. So that's perfect segue into the next question about what are some of the biggest mistakes you see people make when they're networking? <laughs> Not going, not networking is probably the biggest one, not doing it. Yes, well, that that to say, yes. Uh, another one would be that they, there's no strategy at all. And mm. sometimes no strategy can work because you can get lucky. But then when you get lucky, what do you do? You might not be prepared for when you get lucky. So always be prepared, I say. So having no strategy is a mistake and um, treating it like a social event. Like if you go into a club or a party, that's definitely a mistake uh, because you're gonna come away with nothing. Um, a lot of people too, the mistake that they make is that they go to the event, you get the business card or you get the connection. And I call them, I call these people the business card collectors. You collect the business card, it's sitting in your wallet or it's sitting on your office desk or you throw it in a drawer or whatever, and you don't, you don't revisit it. And yeah. so not following up is a big mistake because 
then you don't know what that person might be able to pour into you or what kind of a relationship you both can build, build that you value from each, get value from each other. So that's another big mistake that people make. Another thing is about you don't follow up and you don't follow through and you don't maintain because a lot of people, they think networking is about just the acts and it's just about what you can get. And that's yeah. selfish. Do not be a selfish networker. Networker is about building a relationship. That's why we have speed networking. Speed networking is like speed dating. And if I meet you and we connect, then we're going out on a date. We go on one day, two day, three dates. Then we come to that point where we say, okay, we're going steady. We like each other. Let's start mm -hmm. build upon that relationship. It's the same with networking. It's not a one-sided thing. It's it's about two people building a relationship that is going to be valuable to them both. And another mistake that people make is that they um, they don't open themselves up to to other people much. Sometimes we can be shut off and standoffish. And yeah. our our first impression matters. I would tell you, I was not a person who was good at that. I'm a person that I usually have that resting face sometimes. And, and you might not want to approach me thinking I'm mean or I'm, I'm, I'm going through something. And that is far from the case. That is just my face. And I have been, I have it's worked, I have worked so hard to just not have that face because I, all growing up, I've had people tell me, people will just pass me on the street and they'll be like, smile, smile. And I'd be like, why should I smile? You want me to just smile for nothing, for no reason? It drives me nuts. <laughs> it drives me bonkers. But yes. what I realize is that when you're in, um, whether it be in an interview whether it be in a meeting, in a conference, at a at a networking event or what have you, I realized that that facial, that nonverbal cue is very, mm -hmm. very important. And if that nonverbal is giving off, stay away from me, people are not going to approach you to want to talk to you. That's one of the things I was going back to the relationship building. I The word networking, I know for me it was so off-putting because it was like, oh, networking, I have to like, Talk to strangers and when I reframed it to relationship building, like you said, that made it so much more inviting. And it's like, okay, do I want to, I want to meet this person? This is someone I want to get to know better. And it makes it a lot easier to maintain, like you said, because if you're networking in my head, I know I know of a lot of other people too. It's like networking is like it freezes me up. But if I think about building a relationship, maintaining a relationship, that makes it a lot more natural, like you said, and authentic. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about maintaining it. Like if, if it's someone you met at um, a, a, like a, a workshop and it's whether it's a person that you just met sitting next to you or one of the presenters and you get their number, you do the initial exchange, like, oh, I really enjoy meeting you at the workshop. I like this thing, whatever. What, how do you maintain that after that initial email? Um, so first off, I was saying, please make your most and best effort to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be boring. Because when you, when you follow up, I want to remember who you are. Uh, if possible, when you're following up, mention something that we talked about in your message. Mm -hmm. uh, because what I found out is people are very busy. Uh, there might, it might be someone you connect with who might be a president or CEO that person is going to have so many connections, people that are vying to have connections with them. Yeah. That person is going to get so many emails that they have to go through and you want to stand out. So mm -hmm. I would say when you, in that initial stage, when you're connecting, it's not just okay to just collect the contact, but remember what you talk about. Talk about something that stands out that that person is going to remember. And then when you're following up, whether it be by message via LinkedIn or an email, make sure you're putting that in the message so that they know, oh, this is Molly or this is Lauren. I remember, mm -hmm. right? Once you've, once you've done that, 
then um I forgot the what's the what was the other part of your question? Um maintaining it. Maintaining. How do you maintain that? There are so many different ways can, how you can maintain that. If you connect with the person on LinkedIn, then mm -hmm. at that point you are connected. You are following that person. So you might be looking at that person's journey, how they're going through their career journey. They might be looking at your journey as well. Um, it's easy to send out a, a hello message, good morning, hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, it's easy to see when they post something to comment or, on it or to like it. If you see them getting a new promotion or, or moving up and LinkedIn is very good too, where if it's a person's birthday, you're going to know it's their birthday and you can send a hello, happy birthday. All of that stuff is maintaining the connection. You might not be talking on a daily basis, but you are still, you are still in the purview. And mm -hmm. so when it's time to really come back to connect, it is not difficult for that person to recognize and know who you are because you've been in the purview all this while. And so that is how you maintain the connection. There are some other connections that are going to be very close knit, which these people are going to be in your immediate tribe. And so mm -hmm. you might you might maintain those connections by um, following up with them every two weeks or every month. Maybe you're in a group together with those these people. Um, maybe you reach out to them when stuff come across your desk that you think they might be interested in and they yeah. do the same with you. That is how you maintain those connections. So when you look at networking and, and you building relationships, there are those relationships that are directly immediate, that are in your circle. That's mm -hmm. your tribe. And then you also have that outer um, part of the circle that you still have to maintain those. They are not in your inner tribe yet. And sometimes mm -hmm. the people on the outer can eventually come in the inner tribe, but you still have to maintain those connections on the outer because you never know what's going to happen and you never know what's going to shift and and that's how you keep maintaining those connections so i know um i was originally going to ask you uh, what's better in person or online but then i realized the probably the obvious answer is in person because it's easier to remember somebody in person but with things being so virtual and online now how, what's the best approach for someone to take? Like LinkedIn, we've talked about LinkedIn, but outside of LinkedIn, if you go, if you attend a virtual workshop or class or something, how would you go about approaching networking that way? So outside of LinkedIn, especially if you are a job seeker and you're doing job search, I would say request informational interviews for people that you are interested in in connecting and you you see their journey, you like their journey. Um, you might want this person to be a mentor. You might be looking at this person as being someone that can be in your inner tribe. I would say reach out and ask for a 15 minute coffee, virtual coffee chat, a 15 minute informational interview. And that way you can get to chat with that person um, face to face virtually via Zoom, via Google Meet, or whatever you choose, whatever you choose to do. Uh, it, if it's somebody that's relaxed that you've met on Facebook, Instagram, or what have you, you can um, you can do that by DMing if that's okay. All those different, there's so many different ways and so many different um, aspects how we can um, develop and maintain those connections. Um, by not just doing the LinkedIn only, but um, Zoom and all these other stuff. And follow the same framework of strategy, um, being purposeful and intentional. Did I, did I get the three right? I'm yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very excited for myself. I need to touch my hair, but I don't know. <laughs> um, um, so. What, we're going to wrap up. So why don't you tell people where they can find you and um, if they want to join a tribe. I don't, I don't know if people can just join if they want to join the tribe, um, the we work. Um, so let us know where we can find you. Uh, before, I, before I go into that, I want to just say one last thing. 
I know a lot of people look at networking as a bad word and you don't want to, you don't want to approach it. You don't want to have, some people have said to me, I don't want to have anything to do with it. I would say approach networking like you're approaching, approach it like a friend. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you think of it in that regard, when you, when you go to a networking event or when you're virtually in a networking space, breakout rooms, you're in an event and you break out into rooms on Zoom or whatever, I would say just show up your authentic self. You mm -hmm. can't be anyone else but yourself and no one can be mad at you for being yourself. Uh, you're going to be respected for being yourself. If, that, if there's something that you don't know, you ask questions, you be uh, in, inquisitive and interesting, and people are going to gravitate to you. And the more you do that and the more you practice, you're going to see that you're going to get much better at, at networking. So where people can find me, you can... You can Wait, hold on, hold on a sec. I would like to say that if your authentic self is a jerk, don't be that person. <laughs> <laughs> don't be the jerk don't be the person when it's time to end the meeting you got one more question that's a great way to network and follow up later <laughs> that's my body don't be a jerk. if you are a jerk i would say work on yourself just how i work on my face you would have to work on yourself because you can fake it once or twice but eventually that jerk is gonna come out Exactly. So you might need an attitude and behavior adjustment before you dive deep into the networking pool. <laughs> yes, as my mom always said, fix your face, fix your attitude. Yes. <laughs> okay, so how can people find you? I would say you can you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm Molly Crease on LinkedIn. I'm sure I'm probably one of probably two or probably the only one on LinkedIn, it's Molly Crease. So you can connect with me there, send me a message, be um, strategic about the message you send uh, because we might have to have a teaching moment if your message is not appropriate. Uh, <laughs> uh, and what I want to promote, I would want to like to promote my podcast. It's called The Network Our Podcast. We talk, uh, I talk to a lot of business women and what they're doing their challenges and all of that. And it's the network hour. You can find it on Spotify or where you find your podcast. I'd also want to promote my coaching program. It's called We Elevate. And if you are a job seeker, or you're looking to pivot in your career or you're looking to build that career, I can certainly most help you. So you can go to my website, book a consultation and we can talk about it. And last but not least, want to promote my woman group. We are building. It's brand new. We had our first meeting last month. We're going to have our second meeting this month coming. Um, so you can follow my LinkedIn page, We Network Services, and you would get information on the woman group and you would get information on our upcoming events. You can also visit my website as well, WeNetworkServices.com. And you can um, join the group from there, from Facebook and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's it. This is Molly Crease on LinkedIn. Her name is right there. So you can't say you don't know how to spell it. Two E's. But <laughs> why for Molly? <laughs> Send her a message. Don't make it a teachable moment. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> Show that you learned from this <laughs> Uh, you can find her uh, um it's we network no we wait what was it on facebook we, we ne um the we network woman tribe on facebook we network woman tribe on facebook we elevate um that's uh, and they can book a consultation through your website what's your website again yes we network services.com yes all one word we network services.com there's nothing complicated about the spelling for that. <laughs> you can <laughs> you can just start putting it in We Network, capital W, capital E, correct? Am I making that up? No, it can it can all it can be all lowercase. Um they okay. can type it all lowercase, we network services.com and it should come up. It should okay. pop right up. And you just need to Google because you can't remember that. You have her name. Again, it's right there. So <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and if they Google me, uh, everything will come up, I'm sure. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Or if you looked at our LinkedIn page, you and you can do it now after this because you're already on LinkedIn. Watching yes. This. Yes. Most certainly. Uh, yes. We're making it easy for you folks. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I just want to real quick. Oh, wrong way. This is the, I just want to publicize my the Taiki anniversary giveaway. It's his class, our anniversary this month. Um, so if you sign up for the newsletter. Oh, happy anniversary. Thank you. Very excited. Yay. Yay. So you can sign up. If you sign up for the newsletter at taikicoaching.com, you'll be entered into a speech days to get your LinkedIn profile reviewed by me and a little new LinkedIn profile coaching session because I'm awesome. And so are you, but we want to make sure it shows on, on uh, LinkedIn. So go to nice. taikicoaching.com. Enter the sweepstakes by signing up for the newsletter. Next week, we're going to be talking about how changing your career is probably the best thing you can do because it makes your life a whole lot better. And I once again, want to thank my amazing, wonderful guest, Molly Priest. Um, again, you can follow her or message her right after you watch this. Name's right there. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much.